This section of the book is all about order of operations with integers, and we're certainly going to get to some more complicated examples than what you see below. But I think the most important thing to start the study of this section with is to look at how negatives interact with exponents. So we're going to go through these four examples, and uh, and then after we do them, we'll uh, kind of compare the results we get and talk about why we get the results we do. So in this first one, I'm squaring the 3, and then I have a negative in front. So remember what squaring means. It literally means take the number you're squaring times itself. And we have this negative out here, and really it has nothing to do with that exponent of 2. So that uh, second power is only applying to the thing immediately left of it, so that negative is just kind of coming along for the ride. And of course we know that 3 times 3 is 9, and, and again we'll let that negative come along for the ride. So when I take negative 3 squared, where it looks like this, I should get negative 9. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Now we have a very similar looking problem, but there's definitely a difference. Here my negative 3 is in parentheses. And what this is saying is that this square is applying to the number negative 3. Here the square is applying to 3, and then you had a negative that uh, was in front of it. But here the square is applying to negative 3, so this literally means negative 3 times itself. And we know when we take a negative times a negative, we end up with a positive answer. And so what we have here is two very similar looking problems giving two different answers. In one case we got negative 9, in the other case we got 9. And so what we have to understand is the difference. If you don't see parentheses and there's a negative involved, you're only going to square that number itself and the negative is just going to go along for the ride. Whereas if that negative's in parentheses with the number you're squaring, you're actually going to take the negative of that number times the negative of that number. Now we do have to be careful. Just because we see parentheses does not necessarily mean the answer will automatically be positive. So let's take a look at this negative 2 to the third power. Well, what does negative 2 to the third power mean? It means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Multiply those first two, you get a positive 4, but then positive 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. So what we have there is a, an odd power um, is giving us a result of a negative number. So we use the same principle we did in the last problem in that we're taking the negative times itself the number of times the exponent indicates, but when the exponent was odd, we ended up with a negative. And now going to that last example, negative 2 to the fourth power, well that means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Multiply negative 2 times itself, you get 4. Multiply negative 2 times itself, you get 4. So you have 4 times 4. And so you get positive 16 as an answer. So now that we've taken that negative 2 in parentheses, and this time raised it once again to an even power, we do get a positive. And so in general what we have here is if you have a negative in parentheses raised to a power, if that power is even, you get a positive number. If that power is odd, you get a negative number. And then if you're in this situation with no parentheses at all, just make sure you're only raising the number itself to the power and just letting that negative go along for the ride.